All right, good morning, everyone. Um, today's Crystal Caves HD run is going to be a little bit interesting. Um, I have, yep, good. Uh, I have dug up my Gravis PC gamepad. So this is an original, literally original. This is one of the very first uh, gamepads ever available for PC gaming. If I bring up a slightly, slightly bigger view of it. So it's very, very simple. It's got, you know, a little D-pad. Um, I'll get to the hole in the middle in a moment. It's got uh, four buttons, which is interesting because uh, lots of joysticks at the time only had two buttons and computers at the time really only knew about two buttons. Um, so this is one of the first to actually have that many uh, on a single control. Like now, nowadays you got, you know, game pads with a million different buttons on them. Um, you know, joysticks and plain throttle controls and stuff with a million buttons. This is very, very simple. Um, <clears throat> has a couple of interesting modes. One is with this switch on the top. If you flick that, it rotates uh, the inputs from the D-pad. And I think it also does the same for the buttons as well. The point of that is so that you can actually play it upside down. So if you preferred to do directional controls on this side, you could. Um, and that's entirely in hardware, that's entirely on the thing, there's no software to configure it, nothing of that effect. Turning back around, flicking that up as well. Uh, there's another switch on the bottom, and what that does is instead of having four distinct buttons, uh, you have two regular buttons, those two, the uh, red and the blue, and then the yellow one turns into a rapid fire version of the, of the red, and the green is rapid fire of the blue as well. So for games where that was more useful, you could simply flick the switch, um, and you could hold down one of these buttons to fire or jump or whatever it is, whatever function it was that the game uh, had for you. So the reason it's got a little screen thing at the top there, so that is actually, I discovered, is just a plain old metric four millimeter screw. I happen to have one here. So the idea being that you could have, this actually came with a little a little uh, joystick to screw in there and actually use that for like arcade games, for example. Um, ostensibly, that's the reason why it had that feature. Um, the real reason, as I've read from a couple of articles doing a bit of research for this video, um, was that this actually helps differentiate it from the gamepads of the time from Nintendo. So it was more a legal thing rather than <laughs> actual gameplay. Um, <clears throat> And I mean, that's true. I don't, I don't know of a single person who actually played games, you know, like this. Uh, this used to have four little rubber pads on the bottom, mine are long, long gone over the last 25-ish years. So in theory, you could have had this on the ground here and, you know, played it like a little uh, arcade sort of thing. Um, I don't think I knew anyone who had one of these who actually played it like that. And of course, most people who, who even have still have this uh, gamepad have long lost the analog stick. I sure have. Pop that away. Um, so, where this comes into it, I figured it would be nice to do a bit of a fun run today and try and do... Um, I'm going to go back to episode one. I'm going to try and complete it on hard difficulty with perfect health in every single level. Um, this is not going to be a damage less run. Uh, I don't have the patience for that. I will leave that to people with more interest in speedrunning, I suppose. Um, my goal today is simply to get through the first episode in hard mode, get perfect health on every level using the gamepad. So, let's flick back to this view. So, uh, just fun. So, within uh, OBS, which is my streaming software, you can set up a bunch of different, uh, they're called scenes. So, this is the one from last night that had the keyboard uh, fully in view. I've created a second one that's got mainly just the gamepad in view, so you can see that as I'm playing along. Um, so let's fire up the game and get started.
Right, so that little Apogee intro is actually a special easter egg in the game today. Um, that is due to it being, I believe, the... Oh, sorry, let me just quickly... find... Right, I believe it's the basically the 29th anniversary of the release date of this game. So the developers threw in that cute little uh, very retro intro uh, just for fun. Um, unfortunately, it's not easy to see the entirety of it on my stream just, the, just because of the way that I've got this all configured. Um, but if you buy the game and download it on Steam and load it, you'll get to see the intro. Right, moving on. Uh, what's really cool is that this game actually has native uh, joystick and gamepad input. So I was half expecting to have to do some kind of crazy um, uh, third-party configuration for this to sort of uh, reinterpret joystick controls as keyboard controls to get this game working. But as it turns out, uh, it basically knows what to do with left to right up and down on the joystick and then it's got two extra controls to pick for um, gamepad controls, which is fantastic. And of course the other two buttons are sort of forward and back in menus, which is really, really convenient. So, how's the angle there? That's a bit better, just got a quick drink before we get started. There. Okay, let's get into this. Just realized I have not changed the stream name of this. Sorry, bear with me for a moment. Okay, I think that's good. I'm still getting used to streaming and how Twitch works with OBS and all of that, so... Hopefully my streams are fairly watchable. Um, it's just a matter of practice, I suppose. Um, so yeah, the gamepad controls are great. Uh, using the keyboard would be slightly more precise, I imagine. Um, simply because I can press left and right far more quickly than I can with the, uh, with the gamepad. Lucky if I go. Yeah. I cannot do that on the gamepad. So this lends the game a little bit of extra, a um, little bit of extra hard mode, I suppose. So, getting into the good old first level. Grab that fruit that's up there. So that fruit was worth seven and a half grand as opposed to five grand. Um, that is one of the two major changes uh, that is in hard mode for this game. The other is that you only start with two health points. So I can get hit once in a level, um, and if I get hit a second time, that's it, that you lose the level. Whereas in easy and regular mode, that is three. So you get two, two, uh, two free hits. Um, the fun of this run, though, is that I'm not going to take any... Uh, if I do take any damage, I will need to restart the level. Now, the reason I am bothering to kill everything that I can is because, uh, again, in hard mode, killing enemies is worth more points. Um, historically, I used to play this game very conservatively. I would avoid getting... Um, using up too much ammo, simply because I was afraid of running out. 
And that's just how young me used to play games, I guess. Um, and it used to be a bit of an issue, because in certain levels of this game, um, some require more ammo than others, and there's only so much ammo in the entire game. So the problem is... It's very easy to end up going to a level where you just do not have enough ammo to finish it. Come on. That angle's a little bit odd. It's hard to see exactly what's going on, so I have a multiple monitor set up. Um, I have crystal caves here on the center monitor um, in a lower resolution so that I can have it all large enough to actually see and play on. I've got OBS over to my left, um, and on the right I've got sort of Twitch and Discord and so on and so forth. So this isn't a speedrun, I'm not aiming for the shortest time, I'm simply going for completeness. The other thing hard mode does, obviously, you know, enemies are worth, uh, well the fruit's worth 7.5 grand, most pickups are worth 7.5 grand, perfect health is worth 75,000, as opposed to 50,000. And since one of my goals in this game is to climb as far as I can up the scoreboard, uh, that's important. The last time I checked the other day, having completed all four episodes on normal mode, uh, I was at about 20, 30 mil. Ah, there's a good example here. I've actually run out of ammo. Have to go pick up more. Yeah. I do not in any way expect to end up at the top of the leaderboard. Um, again, that's a thing that I'll reserve for more diligent players, shall we say? So the trick to the fire is it reaches the top of its sort of burst after nine sort of pulses. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they're fairly easy to time. So nine is a pretty strange number for that, and I think what's happened is it is actually eight. Um, so the game itself is coded to display the animation eight times, but there's also the start animation where it flares up from the from the very bottom of the pipe, and that counts as one, which is why it ends up at nine. So it's a kind of reverse off by one little thing. So the treasure is worth more as well. So the maximum amount that you could get from treasure previously, or on easy and regular mode, was 5,000. So we could see there there's at least one that has, yeah, 7.5,000. Grab these treasure chests. So I really do hope that this stream uh, quality is okay. I had all manner of issues yesterday simply because um, of the addition of the second webcam. So my stream yesterday uh, showed the second webcam on the keyboard just as like a test um, of what could be done. Uh, OBS has some interesting quirks when you have uh, when you try and have more than one webcam. Namely, the quirk is that things stop working very well. I suspect it's related to the fact that I have two Logitech webcams specifically. Um, they're not the same model. That was not the last jam. Uh, they're not the same model, they're actually very, very different models, separated by about six years. So the one that I've been using all this long has been about six years old. Um, and I only picked up the new webcam yesterday. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And if you were to Google OBS to webcams, there's a whole pile of people who have had similar issues. Um, 
Morgitech's official advice on the matter is to change one or both of them to use the generic USB webcam drivers that are built into Windows. Uh, that's how I played the stream last night, and it kind of solved things. The issue was that with the two webcams, the uh, whenever I had both running, one of them would be absolutely frozen. Um, or both would work, but only a, like a couple of frames a second sort of thing. So I spent hours and hours yesterday playing around with that before the stream, ended up with a situation that I think more or less worked, um, but was not ideal. This though, the main change that I've made today is to lower the resolution of both of them. It seems to be to do with a, uh, a sort of hard limit on processing, either within OBS or the webcam drivers, or possibly both. It's hard to say for sure. Either way, that was the cause of all of my woes. Yesterday, this stream should be a lot better. I do seem to be dropping some frames, which isn't ideal. Um, uh, but I mean, it appears okay to me. So if you if you're watching and you see the stream a little bit odd at the moment, like if it's um, You know, if it's a bit jerky or there's anything wrong with the sound, please do let me know. Uh, it's very hard for me to tell. I did do a sound test this, uh, before starting the stream, but it is difficult to say for sure. Okay. So the trick to not losing health here and not annoying that uh, turret there is you wait down here until the anti-gravity is worn off, because if you, if you come off this bit here, and you've got anti-gravity, you'll simply fly straight up and get shot by the thing immediately. So the key is to wait for it, get your gravity back to normal so you can just jump up here without disturbing it, and away you go. Right. So, to try and maximize my score today, I'm going to do something a little bit... A little bit different. I'm going to go down here. And see how much ammo we end up with at the end. Okay, two shots, and I don't think. Okay, I think I can jump back up there. Yeah, okay, so there's no ammo down here. I have to shoot that. I have just not enough ammo to grab that extra bonus thing. That's a shame, that means there's some enemy somewhere in this level that I would have to... ...leave alone. And I think it can be the spider at the end. Okay. Let's do this. So in addition to full health, I'm going to try and collect as much as I can possibly within the game. Um, clearly there's not quite enough ammo to do everything in this level. Ugh. In the way that I'm playing it. So in a more optimized full health run, I might do a different level first that would end up with more ammo. To try and maximize the number of enemies that I can kill. Don't know for sure. In terms of balancing between, well, it's like a pixel away from that thing. In terms of balancing between shooting the spiders and shooting uh, the, the spiders and the snakes. Oh yeah, that's this. I just wasted a shot. Great. Uh, I can't remember for sure how much the dinosaur is worth to kill. So in a much more serious run, I would want to grab my spreadsheet and figure out, okay, this enemy's worth this much, I get this much ammo left out of this level, 
to try and maximize things. Um, I'm not going to do that. I want to get somewhere high on the leaderboard. I don't want to be first. And there's this. No, I don't have the time, unfortunately, to do everything that I would need to do to do that. So, to not shoot the spider. Definitely jump over it. Put the user here. Now getting these bonus eggs is absolutely key to a run like this, um, even if doing it casually, simply because it's worth so many points. Because this should be worth 15,000. Jump over the angry dinosaur, and there we go. Bear with me for a moment, I'm just going to quickly do a thing. The trouble now is that I have no ammo left, so I need to pick levels fairly carefully. Especially since there's going to be so many enemies that I need to either shoot or dodge. And I have one shot left to take care of all of these guys. Or dodge around them. more ammo. Okay. Alright, we'll see how we go in terms of ammo. I don't know. Ah, uh, I think I've already screwed this up. Can I only need another shot? Yes. Okay, so I can shoot all but one of the green guys. I have no, oh I have to go pick it up. Okay. I might just refrain from shooting enemies in this level. They're really not worth that many points. Last thing I would have to do is ah yep okay doing this dodging the enemies is going to be a bit of a challenge. That's 
That's just part and parcel of doing these runs, I suppose. <laughs> like sharks. I wonder if someone has written, they've, whether they've done the analysis on these to figure out exactly where you need to go, what you want to shoot, what levels to do first, that sort of thing. I'd be surprised if someone hadn't already done such a thing. But as I said, that's not the goal for me today, I just want to get a high score. Some sort. Uh, okay, now I need to get the rock down. Ah, uh, okay. I have enough ammo, it's just a case of being cautious enough to go everywhere and do everything I need to do. That's awful. Okay. I'm not gonna get it. Nope. Oh well. I mean, it's gonna be hard enough to finish the game like this. I'm not gonna try and get up. I think I said I was gonna do 100%. I'm not gonna do that. I guess this shows that for a perfect health run, it would be more useful to have saved ammo in the earlier levels than to do whatever this is. I think I do have to shoot this one. Maybe. Some of them I will have to shoot in this level. Yeah. Missing shots is not going to help. guy I could not risk. Did not risk letting him run around. Uh, either for better or for worse, there's no points gained by shooting these blocks. Uh, which is good because there's a level in this episode that is just blocks. Okay, we have three shots. We're going to have to be a little bit... A little bit more circumspect with the levels that we do. Like here, for example, I have to go grab that ammo, I cannot just shoot the caterpillar. And he's absolutely worth shooting because he is, I believe, a lot of points. Yeah. 1600 points. No, 6000. Definitely worth getting the fruit. Definitely worth getting everything here that I can. Okay. 
So playing with the gamepad is going pretty well. It's... Like I said, I lack a tiny bit of precision that I'm missing from the keyboard. But overall, this is this is great. This is a great experience. I believe there's one more above this hammer. Ah, it's the jump. Sorry. Highlight video from this run might just be going ah. I'm starting to think I may not have enough ammo to properly play this game. If I do have to restart, I'm sorry. I'll do what we can. It should be off. Oh, sorry about that noise, I'm just gonna shut this window. It is a lovely, cool, breezy day here in Canberra. scarier than it should have been. Um, I have enough ammo to do both of these. I'm gonna leave that though. Seems like I can get away with this. They weren't shooting that guy. Smarter to go up here. And then the last one will be down there. Because, yeah, I really should memorize the locations of these. If I was doing a serious run, I would have to do that. Perfect health, no ammo. I think there's a fair bit of ammo in this level. Let's see how we go, we'll turn the lights on for a start. And in addition to a fair bit of ammo, there's lots of enemies that we don't absolutely have to kill. Like, for the most part, these spiders, you can just jump around them. Okay, this is the way it goes. So timing that shot to kill the blue guy is everything. Yeah, 
Maybe I should kill this spider. Just because that one is probably the hardest to get. Turn that turret off, can't I? There's a switch. No, that is just for those, okay. Alright, let's... Okay, doing a full health run is interesting, because there's so many more different little strategies I have to adopt in order to not just fall flat on my face. Which I'm doing anyway. But I do have a fair bit of ammo, so I'll be a little bit more free with these shots. That guy can get the power up. That guy will shoot the power up. Ah, uh, I don't have enough time. Oh, there's a... That's good to know. I'm sorry if I end up fairly quiet uh, through all of this. I'm concentrating pretty hard and there doesn't seem to be anyone to talk to at the moment, so um, if you are in chat, please just sing out, say hi, and um, let's play this together. I'm going to quickly take a screenshot here because I think I've just spotted a bug that I should probably tell the developers about. Okay. We'll get to that. Okay, we're through the worst of it. Do I have enough ammo here? Yes! Because there's the pickup. Okay. I don't have to shoot the bat, which is good, because I cannot. I have just enough ammo to put the last little bonus thing. too bad. Um, there is the ever-present risk of being hit by a rock. Just like trying to remember where all these... <sighs> Silly. Okay, there's none of them. Alright. Right. Easy 
gravity. Just difficult because we'll now fall towards the rocks. Ah, and I've screwed this up because I have to get those gems before I go up here. Maybe with the highlight reel for this run will just be me resetting. Let's grab these ones. Switch. Oh no, no, no. Uh, okay, this should be fun. Might just let him go back on his merry way. Yeah, we might actually conserve some hours at this level. Um, yeah, so with the with the falling rocks, uh, if you're above a certain altitude in the level, they don't appear. Once you drop below it, they start appearing again. And it's not what height you are at, it's the height that the level is displaying at. Oops, got caught there. Yeah, there's no sane way to get those um, without shooting those spiders. So it looks like we'll finish on three health. Uh, three uh, ammo. Okay, this is going pretty well. I'm pretty happy with this so far. Still a little bit worried about ammo, but we seem to be sort of picking up what we need to. Is the matter of the stakes. So I think I'll do my usual strategy. I'll just shoot the one, and then when the rest are sort of clustered up. Ah, uh, close enough. Now I've got seven ammo. I can be a little bit free with this lot. Yeah, okay, we'll start to turn the tide here. Again, you could probably do this without shooting that bird, but it just makes it a lot easier. And like I said, I think I'm getting back to a, some sort of equilibrium with the ammo. Zero. This one's going to be a challenge. So I want to try and get all the gems, and then grab the... Yeah. 
I said sorry if I do go quiet for a bit, I am just concentrating. I think the timing for these power-ups has changed. Because instead of letting it tick through the entirety of the zero count, ah, okay. I don't want to have to leave points on the table if I can get if I grab the power up mushroom, I can grab those gems very, very easily. But it's the extra, it's the extra blue mushrooms and points at the top that I really want to get. This is how it's going to be. It's just going to be absolutely breezing through a whole stack of levels and then failure after failure. He's not getting too greedy. So, what's the strategy for this? I think I, for this first lot, I seem to be going up at a time. I think the key is passing the turrets when they're going in the opposite direction to you. Straightforward. Okay, we're good, we're good. So this is the level I was worried about. We have to shoot a lot of things. Yes, I do. And that was a waste of a shot. You know what, with this early on, I'm just going to reset. Just so this doesn't turn into more frustration than it needs to. 
Okay, that's fine. Come along, Mr. Dinosaur. Okay, 20 shots, we'll pick up another 5 in a moment. That feels like enough for this level. Come back for the treasure chests. Maybe I already have the gate and I'm not paying enough attention. Okay. Yeah, so we these two. Four shots, three. Avoid this shot, just the one, the one, the one, the one, the Oh, that was close. There were two bats. Oh gosh, now I need to collect the ammo. With only one shot left, I have to kill that one. This is tense. One shot, I can kill that bat with it. Oh no, I don't think I have enough ammo to finish. Yes, I have. Yeah. I need another two shots. I don't think I can do this level. I think I have to go back out. Try somewhere else and save, save, save. I don't know that there's a ton of ammo saving in this one. There's a lot of stuff that absolutely has to be shot. At least the good thing is, I do have a lot of ammo for a normal level. That was the gamepad, not me, I promise. Okay. Let's go for the switch and grab this egg. So we started that one with, I think, 11 shots, and we needed another... two. Yeah, this guy shoots, I have to kill him. So we need to finish a level with 13 shots in order to beat that other one. And I can't help but think not having shot a whole bunch of things in the first couple of levels might have gotten me where I need to go. Yeah, I have a very strong feeling I've not balanced this run very well. I 
I don't think I have enough ammo to finish this one. <laughs> Because I think that guy's going to need three shots. And if I had to, I could take damage and just run past him. But I can't do that. Yep. I think I'm going to have to restart this run. From the first level. Because I'm just not having enough ammo in these levels. <sighs> right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do this. Alright. I'm gonna take a very short break. I'm just going to edit this. Okay. Let's get straight back into it. Should 
very important to take regular breaks from gaming. Less ammo. That's why I'm having such a hard time of this. There is genuinely less ammo in the in the game. Okay. I wish I'd noticed that an hour ago. <laughs> I might have played a little differently. Okay. I know we can just jump over, that saves us five shots right there. I think that just not shooting anything in this level may give us enough um, enough momentum, enough ammo to do the rest. I will shoot this thing. Just because it moves so quickly, it is a genuine, genuine hazard. Like, in theory, I could jump over here. Um, I don't trust that I'd be good enough to do that. Okay. Yeah, there's no way to get past that guy. Snake, we can jump over. The spiders we have to shoot. Actually, maybe we don't. The first one definitely, the second one I think we can dodge. This is, this is the way it's going to be. This is the run. This is what I decided I'm doing with my Saturday morning. Doesn't drop frames. Okay, that's not great. I really don't know what's causing that. I'm sorry. I think it's probably still some minor. Um, I mean, both the both the cameras are still okay. I think after this run I will do a highlight reel of just all the resets. Um, that'll be useful to A, count how many I ended up doing in the first place, and B, entertainment. So one good side effect of having a game remade like this is you get to take advantage of some new technology. So I've just done the same thing. Um, in one part we get to take advantage of wider, bigger screens. So I don't know that the 
level timer at the top there is taking too much more space. Um, it may be that the level is just scrolling a little bit extra further. I couldn't say for sure about the green slides. Uh, the slides of the level go green once you've collected all the gems. I don't remember for sure if that's original game behavior or not. But the main thing is just the sound engine. Um, in the original game, because of the way the sounds were created, they were, they were created through just the PC speaker, just one tiny little speaker that you could make play a note at any given time. It had to handle all the sound effects from the entire game, and especially in the busier levels where there's a lot going on, When there's a lot going on, you end up with sounds that sort of talk over each other. And the issue with that was that you often had sound effects that played over the other. Um, like if you needed to listen out for a particular sound, for example the sound of fruit popping into existence, um, <clears throat> and you happen to pick up a different thing at that point, at the moment that sound played, or if you know you, you shot something or something else is going on, you could miss that sound. And then if you didn't spot it appear on the screen, see like that, that's a pretty subtle sound. And if I was walking the other direction and that had spawned uh, somewhere behind me and then immediately went off the screen, I would never have seen it. Uh, obviously it's a little bit different in the remake now because instead of just appearing randomly on a timer, the fruit is actually... Um, the way it's set up is that there's specific places where it will spawn, and there's certain trigger points where if you walk into it, it will actually spawn the fruit. So finding those spawn points is going to be an interesting challenge for um, obsessive completionists. Because I'm pretty sure I've only found maybe half of them in the entire time I've only been playing this game. Um, and of course I don't remember where they all are. And it's not guaranteed to get them all either, you need to be in very specific places. Like I wonder if there's one right at the threshold of where that thing will suck you in and kill you. That would be a cool joke. <clears throat> Not something I'm going to try on a perfect health run at all. Okay, this policy of not shooting stuff as much is definitely helping. Um, I think I'll still achieve my goal of getting a higher score, simply because things are worth slightly more points now. might not be quite as dramatic. I'll just be missing a few tens of thousands of points from not shooting a bunch of enemies. That was okay. That that may have just simply been the wrong strategy for this run. I mean they are worth more points, but especially with the limited ammo in hard mode, you would need to go through you would need to you'd need to pull out the spreadsheet, you'd need to go level by level, what ammo can I get, etc etc. Uh, I also think that means there's no way to hundred percent this game on hard difficulty. Because there's just no way to kill everything that you can kill. I have to leave. You know, that little snake there is going to be here for the rest of its life. And I mean, there are already enemies that you, you can't kill. Like the little, um, the little purple wall guy in that level. Um, I don't think I actually made him come out, but um, there is just no way to kill him. So. Alright, maybe I'll just stick to shooting the enemies I absolutely need to, and if I can reasonably get past them, I will. Um, I don't know if we get which one. 
which power-up is which. I have to remember if it's the mushroom, I have to walk into the thing. Which is when you get, for example, the the pea pickup to give you um, a stronger weapon. Shots with that don't actually count against your ammo count. Um, which is why it's so crucial, especially in the, the lights off level, to quickly run around and shoot as many of the enemies as you can. Um, and at the very top of the level, uh, where all the little bonus eggs are, you really have to shoot as many of them with the upgraded pistol as you can just to save the ammo, because they're absolutely worth points. They're worth more points than shooting enemies. This guy I can leave alive. <clears throat> okay. I feel like this is going much better. We have a lot more ammo. That's gonna be a close thing. Yeah. The timing for the power-ups has definitely changed. Uh, I think I mentioned this in the first run through this level. Very different level, but... It used to be that the count time time will go 3, then 2, then 1, then 0, and then it would end. Now it seems to end sort of halfway through the 0. That is a big change from the, pre from the original game, and it's affecting my gameplay a little bit. I'm still expecting... Um, I guess so much of my strategy is just queued off not just timing of everything in the game that I've been playing for years and years and years but also the visual cue of that thing disappearing so it's screwing up some other time for this as well back to this one alright that's dripping fast than I remember I don't know Maybe I'm just imagining it. Okay, that's interesting. The first snake is a lot further ahead than the others. For some reason. Okay. Just a different position, different strategy. So when I say reasonably get past enemies without shooting them, I'm not going to bother with this. Maybe I'll leave that guy alive. Even that's a slightly different strategy. is crucial. I've gotten it every time so far, but the last thing I want is to deal with a bird. what this strategy is, but it seems to be working. Okay. First try. <laughs> I don't remember how many times this one took the first time. But I'm going to call this a success. Okay, we have plenty of ammo. Plenty, plenty, plenty. Ah, uh, each pickup only gives us three shots. 
That's that's the hard difficulty difference. It's five. In uh, I don't know what difficulty. Maybe I can jump over the bat. Maybe the bat doesn't matter. Okay. That was close. <laughs> okay, that explains why why this is so difficult. Um, I mean, yes, it said less ammo, but I didn't quite understand what the mechanism for that was. And it's especially difficult with the gamepad because I, um, same as with the keyboard where I can more easily go left and right more smoothly, uh, more quickly, more precisely, I don't have the luxury of doing that with the gamepad. Because the... I'm getting a little low on ammo again. Because, uh, going back to that original point, um... Ah, oh, come on, man. I'm pressing both the jump and the fire buttons with the same thumb. Which makes more precise jump and shoots less precise. Okay, this is good. We have just enough ammo. Okay, here's the thing I was wondering the other day. Um, can the dinosaur fit underneath this? Where does the sprite end? Okay. That leads to some interesting ideas for... Um... I need more ammo for this level, don't I? We'll come back to this one. So that thing with the dinosaur leaves some interesting ideas for future custom levels. Um, where you might end up basically as some kind of... I guess a mouse running and hiding from all the things. And scurrying into low passageways to get away from the dinosaur and so on. I don't know that I can afford the four shots to kill the uh, caterpillar. Which is a shame because he's worth 6,000 points. But I don't feel like those 6,000 points are worth the pain of having to redo this little attempt. So there's a fellow who plays this game who has a YouTube channel where he is doing um, a whole bunch of no damage runs through this game. Last I looked he'd finished episodes 1 and 2, I don't know that he's finished episode 3 just yet.
And I have to admit, through watching him do those runs, sitting there and watching him going, oh, you can jump there, you can jump there, you can take that shot, you can... blah 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 blah. But actually sitting down and playing the games, not, not even in the same way that he's doing, he would reset if he got damaged. Um, completely to the start of the level. To the start of the episode, rather. And I have to take my hat off to him, because that is... even this is difficult. I feel like I'm making this more difficult for myself just because I'm using this um, gamepad. Okay, just wanted to go down very slowly so that I knew where this guy was. Ah, uh, that was... That is a long enemy. That is difficult to jump over. the last mysterious. Okay. I'm happy with that. Oh. Go away, spider. So, a recent change to this game, uh, this remake of it, when I say recent I mean last night, was to increase the amount of light that's available in levels that are dark. Um, and this is another case of taking advantage of new technology that I was talking about earlier. get through this. A uh, recent change in this game where they've been able to use, uh, instead of being limited to the 16 colors of the original game, they've simply been able to turn off the brightness on the pixels because there's way more colors in play in this version of the game than in the original. I'll definitely shoot that spider. This one we can run past, this one we can run past. This one we'll shoot. Grab that so much pressure, we'll shoot this way again. And I've fallen. Okay. There it is. So it's jumping for that platform that makes the strawberry spawn. I'm starting to remember the spawn points of all the invisible gems. Oh, that was close. Oh no! Oh no! No! I'm determined. I will do this level. I will complete it in hard mode. With no damage. Even if it takes me all day, which it looks like it might. Oh, 
I'm trying to decide whether it's worth trying to shoot that guy or just hang back a tiny moment and make sure I shoot everything with the power up. Okay, this is looking good. No! Okay, we definitely need to grab the treasure chest, uh, the treasure chest, the key, on the way up. Because grabbing it on the way back down is just too dangerous with that turret. And the spiders have just stopped mattering to me. Is it worth? Okay, the turret's going down. We'll grab that. can be done. I've seen it. That was close. Let's so we can look at see what this is doing. Let's just shoot that guy. Grab this. I'm just continually torn between leaving leaving spiders alive because they don't matter, and then they do, especially that one, because he then blocks my shot of the uh, the Triceratops. Okay, shoot the spider. We will shoot the spider. So the failures so far have been a combination of that, leaving the spider alive and he blocks the shot and then the guy turns around and shoots me, or the turret um, comes back and shoots me, which is uh, which I can work around by making sure he's on his way down. My own failures because I missed time a jump uh, on the little blue blocks. <sighs> and then this happens. Okay, he doesn't. The turret doesn't get high enough to shoot. Is that that's what I took a screenshot of earlier, isn't it? Yes, it was. Okay. So that turret never gets quite high enough off this wall if you're standing here to actually shoot. So watch this. Yeah. I'm very glad that I'm doing this run before I let the developer know about that because that would make. If that was fixed, that'd be yet another thing that makes this a difficult level. Come on, Mr. Bat. That was a 
was a little nerve wracking that he came back. Okay, that's it. That's done. Never playing that level again in my life. Back to falling rocks. What did we learn from previous runs? We have to grab these gems. Gosh, my desk is getting... It's not me that's getting sweaty, it's my desk that's getting sweaty. As cool and lovely as today is. There's reverse gravity if you... No! In reverse gravity, if you end up falling up to the underside of one of these platforms, it hits it for you. If I was on an actual speedrun, I'd come back for those and not get them separately. <laughs> oh, there's another fruit thing. See, the fruit thing is going to be especially difficult because you're not really looking to see where you are. Um, I'm not looking at Milo at any point in this gameplay. I am simply looking at where I need to go. I don't know how that... Oh, I should have shot. I don't know how that didn't hit me. That rock. Um, I guess the hitboxes are particularly forgiving. And I'm sorry as well that while I'm talking, if I go quiet for a moment, like I've just done there, it's because I'm just thinking about what, you know, the exact right word to say. I don't like saying things that are imprecise. So, the things that I say, I want to say because they are correct. Um, it's a thing I've done all my life. It's just the way that I communicate. Attention, Tim. I'm getting kind of quietly worried now about the ammo situation. Because the last thing I want is to get up to like the last level and just be minus one shot that I need to finish the game. That would be thoroughly... Oh good grief, I jumped over it! It can be done. I don't know why I bothered shooting that. Since I was walking over the ceiling anyway. Oh well. I don't know, there's no way to tell. I'll just need to do my thing. Do 
don't want to fail on the very last. Oh, good grief. Should have enough ammo for this. So I'm coming up now on the second hour of doing this run. And I'm kind of laughing to myself about how optimistic I was before this stream. Because I was kind of thinking, well, you know what, I'll do I'll do the first episode because that's nice and easy. Um, and then for final go and do episode four. Because that's a little bit easier, a little bit more enjoyable than episode 3, which I did last night, and that was a painful, painful run. Um, I don't think I'll be doing episode 4 today. I think I'll drag myself through the rest of episode 1 and then probably finish. Um... I don't know, I might do a couple of episodes, a couple of levels, we'll see. Come on guys, I need to go there. <laughs> and their behavior is entirely random. Um, they don't have a path, they have a boundary in which they exist. It is also one of the reasons why you couldn't really do a tool assisted run of this game. There is just enough randomness. Like, I mean, you could do... I guess you could run like a... an ideal path through the game. Um and then just run, like, you know, count on, you know, things happening in a certain order. And then just running the the tool assisted run over and over and over until you end up randomly with the outcome that you wanted. I don't know if there are any runs that do that. There probably are. Um, like for a game that has like one or two random elements in it. Um, like if there's a 50-50 shot of something happening um, in a certain way. Then you could do the speed run on the assumption that it happens a certain way, whichever way is faster, and then just replay the run over and over until you end up with that actual uh, outcome. No! And again, these failures are just me being greedy. I'm going before I absolutely know that it's safe to. Uh, the gamepad, however, is holding up beautifully. I mean, I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable just from pressing um, the D-pad so frequently. Like, I'm going to wind up with a very slow left thumb at the end of all of this. But it is difficult to make a gamepad with directional controls. Um, that are actually comfortable to use long term and actually play well. Like, there's a ton of very, very cheap, very terrible gamepads on the market today. Um, Logitech haven't updated their basic gamepad in 
Gosh, I want to say 15 years. Uh, I don't remember the model number off the top of my head, but it's the basic sort of... It looks like a very simplistic sort of PlayStation controller, it's that one. That's what makes this gamepad so amazing. It's um, the copyright numbers on the circuit board in it. I actually pulled it apart to clean it the other day. Um, just because it was so grody. The, slide. Um, the copyright dates on the board inside are like 1991, 92. Um, so this is not a... This is not a new piece of equipment. It's very old. And there's been a lot of different D-pad designs over the years. Some better than others. And this one is doing pretty well. Okay, where's the spawn point for that thing? Oh, I don't really care anymore. <laughs> really? No! The reason I'm not just shooting them is to try and conserve ammo. I don't know that I have enough ammo... ...overall, really. So if I can finish this level without expending any more ammo... Or maybe I just need to go crazy and shoot everyone, because this is clearly not working. Okay, so, so the spawn point for it is under that third platform from the top. Okay. This is a good start. So I mean, the way these guys move uh, in the remake is that there's hidden blocks around the level where they aren't allowed to pass through. I don't know for sure how it was done in the original game. I had personally assumed there was just some sort of polygon drawn at a level for each individual creature and it could not pass um, outside of that space. Come on dude, go back, good boy. But even the developer of this game doesn't know for sure. Um, because the source code for this game, to my understanding, is long gone. Uh... Okay. Okay, we're clear. Which kind of makes this game, the fact that it exists at all, a little more impressive because it's entirely reverse engineered from the original game. 13 ammo. I feel like that's a good amount to have. I think this is Alpha Sector?
Let's try with 30 ammo. So for score, we're doing pretty well. Um, I think finishing the game on easy mode gets you about one and a half million. We're very close to at the moment and we're a little bit over halfway. There's 16 levels, I think, in each main level. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe I need another sip of this delicious beverage. This guy, in theory, we could jump past by using this little gap here, but it's very precise to get to that, and then you've got to make sure that you jump over him as he walks past, he walks slowly, and he shoots at you. I always go up here first. I don't really like how low we are on ammo right now. Yeah, because we've got five shots, those, the electric guys down the bottom take three each. Ah, <sighs> well, let's go check out that theory, we've got four shots left, there's just no extra ammo. So we have one shot left, and we've got this guy, and there's just no way to jump past him. And there's no more ammo anywhere else in the level. Okay. We've got 13 shots, we need 15 to beat Sector Alpha. I think that's everything in the top half, so we've got sort of the five down below here. We've got Selector Alpha and we've got this midway. Can't remember which one this is. Oh, it's one of the very first levels, okay. We should be able to grab some extra ammo here. So this is an interesting thing. So in this remake, they changed... Um, the detection distance for these turrets. So this switch controls this turret. He's now firing. <clears throat> oh, and it's on a timer too, it's not one shot must exist, and then it disappears and then you can shoot again. Um, in the original version of this game, standing here, the turret would fire at you. So you had a few seconds to actually move before it would damage you. Gosh, we can actually get past that spider. In theory. Without getting hit by it, and without shooting it. Can't even remember the water. Okay, that's the last place we want to go. Oh gosh, maybe we can't because there's nowhere to drop. Okay. Ah. Gosh, and we have to shoot all of those as well. Oh, but there's like... Okay, it's worth it because there's 12 ammo down there. I have gone completely the wrong way. No, no I have not. That was a wasted shot. Okay, if we reset, the, reset this one, there's no way to avoid shooting the bat there. If we reset that one, we have to make sure that the little walkie thing, we get, we shoot it from behind. Simple as that. Oh no, I think I get it. 
We grab this. So we shoot this. And then that. And then we go... Absolutely hog wild down there. That's how we do that. Okay. That's where we get the ammo from. We finish this game properly. Okay. Now in theory, I could have just jumped up there. I don't think there's time. There's a bit of space now. Oh, that was perfect. Okay, I think we're good. That maze is gonna take some ammo. There's a fair bit more left on the level, okay. This little green guy, I think we can avoid doing anything with him. <laughs> I am... To save that one extra shot... He's going to come up and then he's going to go down again. Yes. <sighs> now to do this really carefully, we're going to go down on the elevator. I don't think we're going to walk out of this with more ammo. Oh no, there is that pickup there. So... We can jump up past it, we just can't get down again. Which is fine, because we're done. Okay, we have 17 shots, that's enough for Sector Alpha. Let's go and do that now. And then hope we have enough ammo for the last 5 levels. We should do... I can't remember that any of them are particularly high on ammo. should try and remember an optimized route for this. I mean, okay, we need that switch off first, so that's fine. To jump up here and then, yep, okay, so the... Yep, my thumbs are beginning to get a little bit sore. Or is it up here, is it? No. Now, we have enough ammo to do this if I make zero mistakes.
Right, we're absolutely going back for all this treasure. I'm not leaving it behind. Not after everything I've done to get to this point. And that is known as the sunk cost fallacy. Thank you, Dark. I think there was more up here. Yes. Oh, that was worth getting. Those are both maximum points. Okay, we have eight shots left. We need six to get past the electric guys. Now this guy, you can't just wait till he's facing away. You have to shoot when he's coming towards you, because if you shoot while he's facing away, he might end up here, you'll end up shooting the air thing. And you'll be very, very sad. Um, okay, that's it. Last five levels. We have managed perfect health on every level so far. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the number of resets that I've done. It must be in the 50s or 60s at this point. Uh, any mini money this one. That's a waste. Now the electric guys, we can jump over in this one. That switch is for the moving platform on the right of this hellish area. Yeah, I'm not going back for that. <laughs> no way, Jose. I know that it's worth it coming back for those four treasure boxes either, because that is such a difficult little jump. Mm. I mean, this guy's going to take a beast out of me anyway. No. No. Okay. That falls. That falls. Grab all these gems because we need to get them before we grab any gravity. Okay. <sighs> We're gonna miss that. Oh. Zero. Drop. 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 Okay. We're good! I did not expect to do this one in one go. This level is a bit of a personal bugbear for me. Because it is such a pain. Deathly open the door. We'll grab those. I'm not going to go through there again. left. This one is fairly straightforward. Do I shoot the bats? I think I can do this without it. Yeah, it'll be tricky. That is my middle name today. I've just decided. 
Gosh, that guy's a lot less of a threat when you're not thinking about how to shoot him. Less of a threat. I might be getting a little bit impatient. I'm going to shoot the back because there's just no point in torturing myself for that. That back and stay. I was about to say, he seems to shoot less. Yeah, so the key to finishing this one probably is to go very slowly. Twenty-two ammo. I think we. I think we're clear from here. Uh, okay. While he does that round, I'm just going to stretch. of taking an actual useful break. <laughs> that was very, very nearly a reset. Doors open, we just need to collect the last. Please don't shoot at me. And this guy makes no noise when he shoots at you, too. Screw this up. Close. Oh, sorry. The whole point of this is to play with a gamepad and I'm just hiding it. Okay, this one will be fun. I mean, this is a fairly easy level. I have a lot of ammo. There's a ton of snakes which are points if I shoot them. challenge to this particular level is simply dodging past all the moving snakes. I think we're going to do something a little bit unusual for this level. Because that's already 100%. I'm going to come back to this one, because I've got 28 shots here. That's 14 snakes I can kill for extra points. There's two other levels to do. Let's do them. Save as much ammo as we can, and then 
I mean, we all have collected every bit of ammo in the entire game, right? So, to maximize my score... I mean, at the end of the day, you can only shoot things that you have ammo for. And everything that I can shoot and kill is extra points. Can I get back up there? It's fine. I may have to reset this level. No, we're good. Cool. I could have saved one shot there by using the power-up to shoot that, but I'm not that bothered. So I'm going to try and maximize my score at this point. Um, I don't know at this point that I could have increased my score overall over the entire game by having shot anything else different. I think the snakes will be, will be enough to give me the points I need. Or want to. If that makes sense. Like, I don't think it matters that I haven't killed everything in all the other levels. All that really matters is there's only a certain maximum number of things that I can shoot and kill in this game simply because the ammo is limited. And the conclusion there is that as long as I end on a level where... Um... Oh, I need the platform, the moving platform to get up there. As long as I finish the game, having exhausted all of my ammo, shooting and killing things. Uh, I'm gonna leave that guy alone. And he can just be there, bouncing to the end of eternity. This guy I will shoot. down the right side. If I fall down the right side of that bit, um, I can avoid landing on the snake platform. Because it looked safe. Alright, so here's what we do. Wake up that guy. Wake up this guy so he can be shot and he's walking around. We'll grab this. We'll kill him. We'll shoot that. Shoot that. And we still have seconds left to shoot that guy. Okay. That'll be how that's intended to be played. Is there a gem in this one? So the location of the gems in the platforms that you bump up with your head, they're not random. They are set. They are part of the level data. So, I mean, there's lots of... I'm not seeing a lot of fruit in a lot of these levels. So, I'm pretty sure that means there's a ton of fruit spawn points that I'm, I'm just not finding. Um, I don't know if they'll have hidden them in, like, you know, corners like this, where you just don't normally go. And there's really no easy way to tell that either, because I don't think the level editor in this game... Um, the level editor of this game is absolutely brilliant, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it does not include the resources for the main levels in the main... Uh, yeah, the main levels in the main episodes, 1 to 4. Uh, its purpose is entirely to create other... How did I get that ammo? I think I can I can reach that ammo from that platform. So I'll wait for that platform to come back. I really wish there was a different name. <laughs> platform versus platform moving platform. Oh, no. Because that is a platform. By definition, I can jump upwards through it. This is also a platform, except it's moves. Um, except I really want a better name for it. Yeah, so we can. Okay. Uh, that guy I can leave alive. 
I'm gonna waste ammo on him. Okay, this is straightforward. And we have 28 ammo, which is 14 snakes that we can shoot in the last level. Oh my god. Um, one thing about this remake is that they've changed some of the death noises for some of the enemies. Uh, like that Triceratops, that noise that he just made when he died, is the same noise that the game makes when you get damaged. Which, especially on this run, is kind of freaking me out a little bit. I wish it wasn't the case. The death noise for that dying normally, and then also for being shot with the head with the um uh, the power up bonus. The sound for that is different. No, not 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 the dinosaur. Um, sorry. It's if you have the power up and you shoot the bonus eggs. Because there's a very different sound um, that they make when you shoot them with the power up. Which is a louder, more satisfying noise. Okay, that was more efficient. Let's not land on spikes this time. And I mean, they're not bad decisions, design wise, it's just difference. Oh no. I forgot about this level. I'm glad that I've saved all the ammo. Although the version of this level that's in episode 3 is far, far worse. I used to have nightmares about this level as a kid. Just because how difficult this one is. Maybe it's a good thing I never actually owned and played the uh, the full version of this game. Yeah, this is this is relatively straightforward. Jokes on you, game. I can jump past the dinosaur. I still can't believe the moment I commented that this guy seems to shoot less. He shot me in the other level. I am the ultimate tempter of fate. Gosh, you can't bump these from below anymore. Um, we're just gonna redo that path just to collect all these treasure. Uh, no, we have to drop from there to collect that. Okay. See, that's a difficult drop to make um, with a controller. Let's just grab these gems from over here. Is. Okay, he's not there. Good. No! Yeah, and those those electric guys at the top, you have to shoot them. Um, you won't get an option. 
Or maybe... Maybe you could jump back up here? But that'd be the most tedious thing in the world. And I mean, 6 ammo is a lot. Oh, okay, I retract that. Maybe it, maybe it can be done. Not by me, I'm not going to bother. Where is... There he is. Now, what? Where is the spawn point? There. Okay. For the cherries. Like, the spawn points for the fruit are interesting, because it's it's very easy, very, very possible to go through certain parts of the level and just not ever hit them. They are a definite extra challenge. And uh, my point about not being able to see the main levels of this game, the level editor, is that you cannot go back and see where all those are. Um, so as much reverse engineering as uh, Ember Heart games have done to get this game to work at all, um, that is not a thing that they have made available, shall we say, for regular players, which is fine. Um, that's perfectly fine. It's another another point of difficulty for the game. The waste. Okay, was that it? That was it. Let's go. So we did sector alpha. Yeah, this is the last level. This is it. I think. We'll find out. What I'm going to do is complete this level, get 100%, and then go back and shoot all the snakes. Um, just so I don't give myself any particularly nasty sort of surprises. Um, like at the moment, I'm kind of banking on the snakes all moving, which helps me see them, which makes dropping down from distances a bit safer. <clears throat> Whereas if I were to shoot them all, they end up as puddles of slime, which don't move, are a lot shorter in height, but will do the same damage as if I had touched them normally. All of which means I'm going to get to the point where I can finish this level and then just go on a snake murder spree. And then I'll be done with this episode, except for the volcano trick. Which I have successfully done on episode 4 of all episodes. Wow, I forgot about the low gravity. That is some severe low gravity. Another reason for doing this later. I mean, they're not worth that many points. So 500, 650, they're worth 150 points. So they're 100 points normally. And I've massively overestimated the number of them. Okay. So in the end, I've become way more conservative again with ammo than I needed to be. I don't know why I pictured there were 14 snakes in this level. Oh my god!
Why do I do this to myself? Because it's fun! There it is, don't get me wrong, this is fun. He says through gritted teeth. I mean, that was just humorous, that was... That was, I've won, I don't need to be careful anymore. It's just so, so difficult to remain mindful of everything that can happen, every hazard, until the moment you're actually done. It is so easy to fall into the trap of just assuming, yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. And that's always when, you know, someone falls off a ladder, they break their leg. Um, you have a lot of paperwork to fill out for health and safety. It's just not the way to go. Did I? I still have this guy to shoot. With one last shot. Okay. Alright, I think we're done. save my game here. So if it's it up with 29 extra shots, that's actually a lot of other things that we could have shot and killed. As brutal as that sounds. Which is another 14 ish enemies that take. Um, let me think. Yeah, there's another 14 enemies that take two hits, and then we have one free shot. So there's, I want to say, at least four dinosaurs that we left alone. which are all five hits each. There's the caterpillars. No, I don't think there's... There isn't enough ammo in the entire game to kill everything in hard mode. Now I'm going to try the volcano trick. And I have an idea for how to get all the fruit for this one. And that trick is to fall all the way down here. Oh, there's a timer! At the top of the screen, the level timer appears. And when you pick up a bit of fruit, it resets to 30 seconds. No. It adds 2 seconds. I'm not going to collect them all, there's no way. I took the wrong... Ah, good grief. Yeah, I took the wrong strategy. Um, when I did this for episode 4, I just basically ran to the deepest, darkest area of the level and worked my way up on the basis that that would be easier and more precise than falling. Um, and I think the linear nature
that saved where I was standing, so I think I can save next to the volcano and just do this over and over. Um, yeah, it's just the nature of how that level was designed and then the way that I thought it needed to be done that let me finish it that way. So if we... One, two, three... If we start on this side, we'll actually get a slightly better go at it. Because we'll end up on the right side, we'll save a tiny, tiny bit of time in running across it. One, two... Oh, I screwed that up. Okay. Hopefully it's cumulative and not... That was weird. No, you have to do it three times in one go. the time start when you hit the first one? Because if it starts when you hit the first one, that gives you all the time in the world to pick the best starting position and then run through them all. Gosh, I think I might do that. Do it. Look at this. Platform willing. No, I'm not going to. Unless I grab this one quickly, and then... No, I have a chance, I have a chance, come on. No! It all depends on the positioning of this platform, because if I can... <sighs> so close, so close. If it's down to the platform positioning... Okay, let's wait a moment. Yes, so the time starts from when you pick up the first one. And I've done this backwards. Okay, top down. That's the way to go. It's a matter of finding what the rules are. And then hoping the reality... Okay, I think we're good. I'm gonna wait for this, pla this platform to go past. And I think I've got enough time in hand that it doesn't matter <laughs> that I've missed the platform. I think that's it. Yes! Oh, that is sweet. Okay, so with... I, I'm pretty sure I would have missed a couple of shots. I'd say two. So maybe I've got 31 ammo in hand with the route that I just took. If each... <sighs> I think the dinosaurs are 5,000 normally, 7,500. So four of those is, what, another 30,000 points? Um, the caterpillars are 1,500 per segment, so that's 6,000. So I think four dinosaurs is 30,000, and then the caterpillars... Say if I had 32 shots, I could kill four dinosaurs and then three caterpillars. I mean, it's really not that much. There's not that much in it. Um, 
I think. I think the score that I'm going to end up with for this episode is not too far off the theoretical maximum, just because I don't think... Ah, well there you go, I've just uh, completed my first episode on hard mode, so I get that extra achievement as well. Um, I don't think there's that much more score to pull out of this. You would have to do the routing, you would have to analyze all the levels, you'd need to figure out a way to get through the game ended up with zero ammo having killed all the most important things. Uh, not an exercise that I will do myself. Again, I will leave that to the more diligent speedrunners out there. <sighs> and they're cute. Look at those little fluffy things. Okay. All important. Where am I on the leaderboard? Two and a half million, and I've just beaten my friend. Where are we? Eleventh. And my old buddy Quadralian's in the top. Okay. Cute, mate. Cute. <sighs> okay. Eleventh. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna grab a quick screenshot for the post stream tweet. recognize anyone else majorly. Lots of people are getting sort of two and a half... Yeah, I mean this this game has been out for a couple of weeks and the competition has already massively heated up. So even, okay, so the person in 45th there, you know actually, he's the fellow who's doing the uh, no damage full health runs. Um, I wish him well. <laughs> and you should definitely go check out his channel on YouTube as well if, you're, if you'd like to see a rather more cautious approach. Um, so he actually manages to do it in about 40-50 minutes, this entire first episode with taking no damage at all. Um, I have just taken... This run, uh, after the main reset, would have been about an hour and 40 minutes, so he's an hour ahead of me in that way. Just off the top 10. Oh well. Alright. Um, this has been a challenge, but super fun. Um, my little gamepad here has worked beautifully throughout the entire thing. The only problems that I've had with it have been my own failures, so... Top notch to Gravis, who were bought out by, I think, Kensington? Uh, way back when, so they're not actually around anymore, but... On the extremely off chance that anybody who was involved in this gamepad originally, back in the 90s, ever sees this particular video, thanks man. It's been fun. Okay, that's it. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Um, if you follow me on Twitch, there's a little button just below where you're watching right now. Uh, if you follow me, you'll get notifications of when I go live, um, and it'd be great for more people to come and, you know, jump in and chat about this game as I play through these. It'd be really, really great. Um, or if you're watching this on YouTube, um, same thing, if you follow me on YouTube, uh, you'll get to see some new highlights as I post them there. Uh, follow me on Twitch to get notifications about other stuff going on, um, not just this game. Uh, at some point in the next couple of weeks I will start playing a couple of different games as well. Um, Crystal Cave has been sort of my first streaming game, which is great, but I'm going to run out of content at some point in the next week or two, so please do follow. Um, see how we go with new levels. I don't know where I'll go with this one. Maybe I'll try the same thing, um, gamepad and full health on episode 4. Um, maybe that could be my mission for next week, um, but we'll see. Anyway, um, thanks for hanging out. Stay safe.
and see you guys later on.